A bora, Jay! You bought a what? <laughs> hey, Jay! What color? Black! Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. Welcome to Modified episode number 24, where we share with you vehicles that have been accessorized and modified for everyday use and four wheel driving. All right, let's meet the owner. Dan, how you going? How are you? Not too bad. Do you want to tell our audience what make and model and year? Uh, this is a 2011 Jeep Wrangler JK, a CRD, so it's the diesel with the automatic, makes it easier for the rock crawling. Moderate lift and Solid axles, front and rear, part-time four-wheel drive. The bar work. Dan, what do you got here, mate? Uh, ARB winch bar with the uh, winch off at the moment because it needed some servicing. Oh, you're getting a service at the moment? Yep. And you got your latch here? Oh, so you got the cable? Used to have cable. I oh. swapped it over for uh, Dyneema rope. Okay. Yeah. No bash plates yet? Uh, bash plates off so that I could get to the winch. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's why I thought it looked different. Yep. Yeah. See, I, I know Dan from a previous trip we did side steps. Yep. They're made by Blackjack Welding, which I'm pretty sure is a guy who used to do it out of Perth. And those things are heavy duty. I've had the, the Jeep balancing on those. They look super solid. Mm. That's a lot of steel there, isn't it? You can see you use them a bit too, eh? I have used them a lot. Yeah, they've protected both the sill and the uh, underneath. And you got a rear bar as well? Some more... Steel here? Yeah, uh, blackjack welding again, I'm pretty sure. Um, rear bar with a swing away tyre carrier. Heavy duty. The guy does some really good work. I've, I've had some people who know what they're talking about compliment me on the welds and stuff. So. Well, you can tell just by looking at the welds, really. Pretty solid. Yeah. Good gear. So this arm opens without the door opening at the same time, or is it the same time as the door? No, no, it's, uh, it's separate. Yep, separate. It'll swing okay. away. Oh, so you got your work lights on the back of this? Yep, work lights wired up to the... Um, dual battery so I don't drain the normal battery. And I've taken the jerry can mounts off. I don't tend to run around the city with those. They just sit on the um, on the tire carrier as well. Oh, it clips on the hill. Yep. Now on the roof rack. Roller? Yeah, it's a bit of a throw together. It's a roller rack on roller rails and then it's got a Rhino backbone system which has a couple of brackets inside the um, hard top there to transfer the weight down to the body of the Jeep. Oh, so it's going through the fiberglass down here? Yep, down on the inside. An awning? And a pull-out awning, yep. Two and a half by two and a half as far as I know, yeah. Lights and comms. Start with these? Yep, uh, HID spotlights wired in at the same time as the uh, LED floods. Pump out some pretty good light, never had a problem. These are your pencils and easy spreads then? Yep. Same with the standard light? Yeah, the standard headlights, they're a little, little dull for for a stock light, but they're yeah. good enough around town. I suppose you got these on anyway. Exactly right. It's not going to matter. Yep. Uh, your comms. Comms, so the um, CB radio, 80 channel. I'm in the dash, hidden away with yeah. the uh, digital hand unit. We'll start with your tyres. Yeah, um, Bighorn 35 inch, close enough to 35. Mud tyres, they've been great in the wet, off-road. Um, and really good on the sand. Let them down a lot because they've got really strong sidewalls, but uh, I've never had a problem anywhere I've been. I suppose you wouldn't be that heavy either. That's a pretty light car, so yeah. Come down a bit Comparatively. More. Are they 17 inch rims? Yes. Is there a specific offset you've put on here to get a size tire in the car? Nope, that's, uh, that's stock, and they actually flex up inside that guard very, very close, but it just, just fits. Just fits. Yep. And your suspension lift? Yeah, the lift is around a three inch old man emu. 
straight off the shelf as far as I know, bolt straight in. You got sway bar disconnects on this one? Sway bar disconnects to get the articulation on the front. It's got an e-locker but not needed until you start lifting wheels and you've got to be pushing the jack pretty hard to do that. Is your e-locker in the rear? It's got an ARB air locker in the rear. Oh, yeah, and an e-locker in the front. E-locker in the front. The e-locker came out of the last jack that got written off. Um, I bought the wreck so that I could get the axles and the um, locker out of it. Okay. Because I'd spent a lot of money on that. Something we uh, don't normally cover because it's kind of rarely done to a vehicle, well, to most vehicles, is axle upgrades. So you've got a chrome Ollie axle upgrade. Correct. Um, the entire housing is an upgrade by Terraflex, um, heavy duty everything. And the axles themselves are CV axles with CV joints, chrome Ollie. Um, That's an American um, place, isn't it? American manufactured, yep. Yeah. Uh, most of the parts for Jeeps all come from America. They love them and they modify them like you wouldn't believe over there. And these particular axles are guaranteed not to break up to 35 inch tyres. Wow, that's a pretty cool guarantee. Um, and chrome, chrome Ollie, for those who um, don't know what chrome Ollie is, is what they use for uh, you know, the, the cages on racing cars and um, rollover cages, stuff like that. And it's really, really strong, but pretty light metal. Dan's gonna show us his power plant here. And a lot of you guys from the States will probably be interested in uh, the diesel version of the Jeep. I understand you don't get it over there. But Dan, just as you open it, I was looking for a second battery. Uh, it's in the back. In the back? Yeah. Okay. Yep. There's no room under the bonnet for these. No, so, it's not much, is there? Um, the petrol version, you can fit them in, but you've got to do a couple of modifications, but just no room with the diesel. Yeah. Also known as in a nice high Alternator, Spot. yeah, been designed like that, keep it up out of the way. So you got your snorkel coming in. Snorkel over this side. Yeah. A must for water crossings. ARB compressor. ARB compressor for the uh, pumping up the tyres after you've been out and the rear, rear locker. locker. Yeah. Anything else you've done in here? No, pretty much stock. Aside from, yeah, you, know, you got your red arc battery. Got the red arc battery Oscillator. isolator for the rear battery. Battery's right up the back. What litre size engine is that? 2.8. 2.8 yep. four cylinder. Averaging around 15 litres per hundred at the moment. That goes up a lot when you're off road, obviously, but yeah, uh, yeah 15 is the average at the moment. Yep. And how big is your tank? <laughs> the stock tank's quite small. I think it's around 70 litres. I've got a long range uh, auxiliary tank. That's about another 40 litres. And in a pinch, I can carry the extra 40 litres in two jerry cans. Okay, so that's a fair bit of range then. I can get a uh, um, 1300 odd kilometres if I need to out of it, yeah. Can't complain about that. We're at the back of the vehicle now, and Dan's going to show us how he's utilised his space, which is quite limited on. Or lack of space, yeah. But it looks like a whole lot of space now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> with the seats out, there's a lot more space. Um, obviously, then it just becomes the two seater, but. Um, these were a set of drawers that I bought, messed up the measurements. They didn't fit the twin drawers, so I've um, converted it to just the one drawer. Kept the one with the fridge slide and gave the other one to a mate for his car. Okay. The rack came with my last Jeep and I modified it to fit. Uh, it just bolts into the seatbelt anchor points and gives me a nice firm base to, to have everything tied down to. What fridge do you normally run? Got a 50 litre Waco, Waco CFX. Yeah. Okay. Um, latest first aid kit, nice easy to get to. Um, yeah, first aid kit, a couple of tarps, always good to have if you need to get down and dirty for anything or use them for camping. The battery sits in the storage, oh, which yeah. is in underneath here. The battery. Um, you can get to it if you need to, which is in under okay. there. LED lights across the top, wired up to the battery as well. You find that you've got enough room? It's limited and... Uh, uh, when are you done it to two seats though? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The way it is right now, it's, uh, it's tons of room for me anyway. Yep. Yeah. And one other person if they need to, you can, you can get just enough gear in for two people. Because yep. you've actually got more room in here than in a four-door Jeep. I do with the seats out. With the seats yep. out. And I see you've got a table there too. Yep. Always handy when you want to... Welcome to Dan's cab. He's going to run us through what he's got in here. So Dan. Right. Uh, so the uh, CB radio is hidden down under the dash. Got the um, 80 channel with everything on the handpiece. Alpine deck with Bluetooth. I wanted that so that uh, I could answer phone calls and stuff without 
being fined for driving on the road. That's wired up to a reverse camera over the license plate at the back. Got the air compressor switch, diff locker switches, spotlight switches, reverse um, or rear lights, and the um, long ranger fuel tank, which... Uh, I oh, see so switch over there. by when you hit that switch you switch the tank. Yeah, that's got a little gauge that lets you know if it's full or not, as well as a switch and oh, that pumps yeah. into the main tank. A gauge and a switch, cool. Yep. Yep. Pretty handy. They are, they're a good little tank, good unit. Q and A. Damn my first question. I just went and bought a short wheelbase JK Wrangler, yep. a CRD. Yep. What's the first three things you recommend I do? Well, if you're going to do any sort of off-roading at all, you want tyres, muddies are good, a lift, decent lift, two inches even, um, just gets you a bit more clearance for the wheel movement and with the disconnects at the front allows that travel without wrecking the guards. So disconnects will be in your top three? Disconnects would be there, yeah. I reckon, yeah. So you're heading out into the bush? Yep. What's the one thing you must have with you? Fridge. Fridge? Fridge. Yep. Got to carry the beer. Question? Yep. What made you decide to get this particular make and model yep. and what did you have before? Because I know um, it's going to be in the same yeah, hands of... Jeep, I did a bit of research before I bought any Jeep. I just found that they look to be a fair bit of fun and pretty robust off-road. So the reason why I bought this one was as a direct replacement for my last Jeep, which got written off in an accident. Bought the, the wreck, I optioned that because it had all my gear in it still and some mechanical parts like the, the front axles and um, front locker were uh, all in it. So I bought that as a... Uh, as the wreck and okay. managed to salvage a lot of that. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so what's your top three trips in this particular vehicle? Uh, top three trips, the, the first big one I ever did really, um, any camping anywhere was um, with Explore WA, went down to the Dontra Casto. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes. Jaeger up. You, you did it correct. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was pretty magic. That's a, a beautiful part of Australia. The second trip was, was the one with you. Um, when we went down between Bremer Bay and Albany, that was unreal. Um, and just as a general trip is the power lines. Um, it's just good fun yeah. to get out and play in those. Those things are so much fun to, to push off road. Well, they're a nice toy, these ones. They are, a, that's the good word for it as a toy, yeah. So what's your next modification for the Jeep? Well, aside from just getting the finishing touches after I bought it and got it up and running for trips is more lighting. After doing a couple of camping trips, you just can't have enough lights. So I need something out on the sides yeah. for when you're camping. I like your party um, lights and the party the lights, yeah, they've got to come out from inside. I've got to attach yeah. them, but uh, look, yeah, look, just... Look, it looked great on the time lapse, I'll tell you that. I did it really, yeah. that was the I'll red. I'll throw it up now. Yeah, <laughs> all right. But um, yeah, just something fixed, probably on the side, just an LED light or something on the side, just to yeah. get a bit more light when you're, you're parking and yep. setting up. You need it, definitely. So my final question, a JK Wrangler, short wheelbase, CRD, mm -hmm. so Conrail Diesel. Yep. What are some of the things to look out for? If you're buying second hand, which I did, you've just got to be aware that, that a lot of Jeep owners modify. So you've got to watch out for whatever's been done previously. Oh, if they've um, done something wrong. Know what you're going into um, and know what you're looking for in terms of, of lifts and the suspension. Make sure it's been done properly and wiring. You know, there's, there's spotlights and reverse work lights and also all that sort of stuff you just want to make sure it's been done properly so you just go yeah. in prepared and make sure that the people before you have, have done it yeah. half decent good point thank you very much dan thank Having you jeep on here cheers and if you want more details on this vehicle more photos stuff like that you can see in the description below and there's a link up in the corner there also the trip that dan came with us on is a two episode trip really really good watching that is also in the description below and another link up there. You can subscribe right here. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in another video.